We're here with um, Audrey Moiso visiting. It's good to have you here, Audrey. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. How you came to know the Lord? You know, when did Jesus come um, take a hold of your life? Jesus came into my life in 1985 mm -hmm. in Thompson, Manitoba. Yeah. Because um, I was going through a lot of uh, marriage problems. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I had nobody to turn to but to Jesus himself. And, and it was for a while like I was back and forth. But when I was baptized, I knew that I was saved. And I've been struggling along and not really finding anybody to communicate with as a Christian. Mm -hmm. But in Thompson, there was a lot of people. Yeah. And, and so in 1994, I moved back to Sandy Bay from Saskatchewan. And um, like, you know, still struggling, but Jesus had never left me. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. And I was very, very happy. And in 2000, 2006, I had cancer. Mm. A, a year of my life. Yeah. It was, I didn't know what happened. Uh -huh. Couldn't even walk, couldn't even do nothing. I was mm -hmm. just bedridden. Yeah. But, you know, I never gave up on Jesus. Mm -hmm. I used to read my Bible yeah. daily. Oh, yeah. And I just learned to love him more each day. Mm -hmm. And I, like, you know, because it was so hard for me, like being a single parent. Mm -hmm. And I had three girls to look after because my daughter died in 1989. Wow. So like, you know, it was hard. I struggled. And, um, and then after that, I, I, had, um, I had open heart surgery. Oh, wow. Yes. And Jesus again yeah. cured me because he loves me. Mm -hmm. Yes, now I'm um, struggling with kidney failure. Yeah. But Jesus is with me again. Yeah. So like, you know, it doesn't matter what a person says. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if you give yourself to Jesus as your personal savior, yeah. he is there for you. You know, going back, um, where did you grow up? I grew up here in Sandy Bay, Manitoba, mm -hmm. and I'm a, a residential school survivor. Yeah. Yes. And when did you go to residential school? Oh, back in the 50, uh, 59, oh, in the yeah. 60s, yes. And how long were you there? About seven years. Oh, the major part of your childhood. Yes, I was only four years old when they took me wow. from my parents, and we actually lived in the reserve. Yeah. Yes, but they took us because that was what the government wanted. Yeah. The Aboriginal people, yeah. you know, to go, to send their children to school. Mm -hmm. Yes. And after when you came home, was there a lot of change? And like before, since you went? Yes, there was a lot of changes. Well, my mom was disabled. Yeah. And we were the ones to look after my mom. Mm -hmm. Yes. But as a child, yeah. as a child, like, you know, I was baptized a Roman Catholic. Yeah. But, you know, that didn't answer my inner child. Yeah. I was so lonely all the time, yeah. you know, seeking for something. Mm -hmm. So one night, 
when I was sitting outside our house in Nelson House. That's when I took Jesus as my personal savior. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. And this was after you got married and yes. moved away from home? Yes. So what prompts you to move to Nelson House? That's where my husband was from. I went to school with him. Yeah. I met him in Winnipeg, so we got married. That's why I moved to Nelson House. And how many children do you have? I have one son. Oh, okay. Yes, and I have, and I adopted one daughter. Mm hmm Yes, but my daughter died of alcoholism. Oh, yeah. But my son doesn't drink. Yeah. He doesn't smoke. Mm hmm So I'm so thankful, you know, for my Savior that one of my child is with Jesus. Yeah. And I have three, three, three daughters, like my daughter left for me. Oh, okay. Yeah, they were three, three, five, and seven. Oh, your and, grandkids. Yeah, and I was battling cancer. Yes. But never did I give up as a single parent, no. Yeah. Yeah. This song, Praise You in the Storm has been a stalwart for many Christians over the years since it was introduced and many Christians can identify with it because we all go through different storms and are even in our Christian life, but it's knowing the presence of God in and through it all that comes to be our comfort. I was sure by now, God, you would have reached down wiped our tears away stepped in and saved the day but once again I say amen and it's still raining as the thunder rolls I barely hear you whisper through the rain I'm with you as your mercy falls, I raise my hands, praise the God who gives, who takes away. I praise you in this storm, and I will lift my hands, for you are who you are, no matter where I am. Every tear I cry, you hold in your hands. You never left my side, and though my heart is torn, I will praise you in this storm. I remember when. I stumbled in the wind You heard my cry to you You raised me up again So, you know, you say you came to know the Lord. Who introduced you to, to Jesus? There was a lot of people in Nelson House, like, you know, that were Christians. Yeah. And I met my friend, her name is Ann Beckin. Mm -hmm. That's the one when I was battling cancer, she was the one that helped me with my Christian life. And still today, we're on the phone reading the Bible together. Wow. Yes. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Um, tell me about your struggle with uh, cancer. I went for a checkup and they diagnosed that I had cancer. 
and uh, they operated on me, like yeah. they cut me from hip to hip. Wow. Yeah, and um, I had infection. Yes. And I I was hemorrhaging. Mm-hmm. And it was very hard, but never once did I give up on my Lord. So were you like hospitalized? For a year and a half, I was in a hospital. Wow. And I couldn't even peel a potato. Yeah. That's how bad it was. Couldn't even feed myself. Oh. I was only 106 pounds. Wow. Yes. And I couldn't even walk. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like, you know, each step I take, it's a miracle. Oh, yes. Yes. Wow. And I used to get so paranoid, like, you know, when I was walking, what are the people going to think of me, you know? And I said, you know, as long as Jesus ex accept me the way I am. Yeah. So that's what helped me. Yeah. Wow. How would you encourage someone that have, like, you know, a disability, you know, even with the your illness right now, how would you encourage someone? You know, I usually, <clears throat> I usually talk to people. Mm -hmm. Like one time, about a month ago, after my dialysis, I came out and there was this woman. She called me and I said, oh, would know me, like, you know, coming out from the hospital. And this was this, uh, my cousin's daughter. She said to me, you know, my son was diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. So I walked up to him like, you know, hurt, yeah. but I, I walked up to him and I like, you know, I, I rubbed his shoulders and I said, you know, I said, you know, when we hear cancer, mm -hmm. we panic. Yes. As if that's not dead, you know, we're dead. Yeah. But, you know, I said, you know, look at me, I said, Look at me, I said. Mm -hmm. Like I had an operation from hip to hip, mm -hmm. you know. But if you believe in Jesus, yes. he could take you to this, you know, ra raving waters. I said, put him in your heart, ask him. Mm -hmm. You know, you're such a young man. Yeah. And he was just like that, shaking up. And I said, then, and I told him, uh, and it's okay, I said, if you think I'm crazy, you know, yes. when I'm talking to you, when you're going through a hard time, and I'm talking to you about Jesus, but you know, that's where we go. That's where we go in need. Oh, yeah. For me, anyways, that's where I go for my needs with my Jesus. Wow, that's a pretty good encouragement, you know. Mm -hmm. Standing on this mountain top, looking just how far we've come, knowing that for every step you were with us, kneeling on this battleground, seeing just how much you've done, knowing every victory is your power in us. Scars and struggles on the way, but with joy our hearts can say. Yes, our hearts can say Never once did we ever walk alone Never once did you leave us on our own You are faithful, God, you are faithful Kneeling on this battleground Seeing just how much you've done Knowing every victory is your power in us Scars and struggles on the way But with joy our hearts can say Yes, our hearts can say Never once did we ever walk alone Never once did you leave us on our own you are faithful, God, you are faithful. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. Um, tell me about your treatments. 
I've been on dialysis for 14 months already. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to have a headache, like, you know, a real bad headache, and as if my eyes were popping out. Mm -hmm. So what am I going to do now, I thought. So they sent me to the eMERGE, mm -hmm. and I was, they said that I had a mild heart attack. Wow. Yeah. So I went to Winnipeg about five weeks, I guess I was in Winnipeg, and mm -hmm. I went there in October yeah. and November. That's when I got that open heart surgery. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it was very, you know, we thought that because all the, my cancer, you know, and all that. Yeah. And uh, my son said, Mom, he said, we just have to put it in the Lord's hand. Wow. He said, but you know, I'll be here when, I'll be here when I, when you get up, Mom. So they gave me that operation, open heart surgery. Mm -hmm. Within 24 hours, I was walking around. Wow. Yes. So that's why I say, have Jesus in your life. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, no matter what kind of sickness you have. Wow, we sure have some kind of faith, you know. Yes. Wow, it's, that's just so awesome. You know, people need to know that and hear that. Yes. You know, and so you go for treatments every... Every second day. Every second day. Yeah. And what does your day consist of when you have your dialysis? Oh, sometimes it's really hard. Yeah. But like for the past three, it's been awesome. Oh. Yeah. But I have people praying for me all, from all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Because we send requests, prayer requests all over. Yeah. People that we know. Yeah. Yeah. And so do you go early in the morning? I leave at 6.30 in the morning and I don't get back till 3.30. Oh, yeah. And sometimes I just sleep. Yeah. Yeah, don't have no energy. I'll, I'll go to sleep at about 4 and I won't get up till quarter to 5 the next morning. That's wow. how long I sleep. Wow. Yeah. That's really... And sometimes I don't even have no energy to do my daily chore, my little chores. Yeah. But like for the past three days, I could do things. Wow. Yeah, I could do <laughs> things through prayer. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I stumbled in the wind You heard my cry to you You raised me up again My strength is almost gone What can I carry on When I can't find you As the thunder rolls I barely hear Whisper through the rain, I'm with you. As your mercy falls, I raise my hands, praise the God who gives and takes away. Praise you in this storm, and I will lift my hands. You are who you are, no matter where I am, and every tear I cry, you hold in your hands, you never left my side, and though my heart is torn, I will praise you in this storm. You talk about you know, losing your daughter. How long ago did that happen? In 89. She mm -hmm. was only 24 years old. Oh, so young. Yeah, I adopted her. Yeah. When she was 10 years old. Mm -hmm. I tried my best to bring her up as a Christian, but alcohol and drugs were involved in her life. That must have hurt. It hurt, yeah. And I was stuck with three little grandchildren. 
Oh, wow. And now they're, they're, they're still at my house. I have, between the girls, I have nine grandchildren. Wow. So I'm blessed, yeah. but my son is blessed too. We have little twins in our lives. <laughs> wow, it's so beautiful, you know, to be a grandma. Yeah. And my grandchildren pray when they come to the house. <laughs> and I always leave my Bible on the table, mm -hmm. you know, where they could see. Yeah. Feel free to read, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And sometimes, you know, when uh, I play gospel music, mm -hmm. because I usually play um, um, Cree songs mm -hmm. from Nelson House. And they would come in, oh my God, mom is having another funeral. You know, they would say, but I said, you know, this is my house. I listen to what I want. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else you want to share? Like from your experience, um, you know, walking with the Lord? Just to trust in Him. Because, you know, they told me on oh, that was last week, mm -hmm. my son and I, my kids were called in because they just uh, called cool blue on me twice. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Yeah. Yeah. So they, we had an uh, emergency. Yeah. And um, they said, like, you know, if I have a heart attack, they couldn't revive me because my bones are not really, oh, you know. Yeah. And they said they couldn't take so much water out of me. Yeah. Because uh, they only take like one liter out. Oh. Every time I go in, I'm just like, you know, I'm flooded inside. Yeah. Yeah. So they told me I could have a heart attack anytime. Oh. And I said, it's okay if I have a heart attack, you know, I'll have Jesus, you know, I'll have Jesus with me. Yeah. yeah, the girls were crying and all that, and I said, you know, why cry, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Because I'll be rejoicing when I die. <laughs> Amen, you know? yes. Yeah. <laughs> wow. One thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Another thing I wanted to ask you is about this place, this meeting place, you know. How are you involved in this uh, <laughs> ministry? I never knew about Becky, okay. never. Yeah. And then I was very lonely. I was very lonely. And I said, I wonder how I could get a hold, like to talk to somebody. But somehow we connected, mm -hmm. and I've been, maybe only once I miss, you know, a meeting here. Yeah. Yeah, and I'd like to get out every, like, Wednesdays or something, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been awesome. Like, she's really nice to me. She does a lot of wonderful things for our people. Oh, yeah. I try to talk to people about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody has a pass. Yes. You know, but my pass is forgiven. Yeah. The many friends that you have encountered since coming to know the Lord, you know. Yes. You know, um, it didn't matter who it was. And, you know, the Lord has provided you many friends. Well, I have my friend, and she's in Thompson. We always pray over the phone mm -hmm. and we had prayer requests yeah we pray for people mm -hmm. people that needed needed prayers people that were breaking up people that were going to court yes. we prayed we have a friend from ontario glenn kirsch mm -hmm. like you know we pray with him wow we used to pray 5 30 in the morning yeah every morning mm -hmm. But I couldn't do that now because I'm on the road. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you know, we still do that. Wow. And I have one guy from Shimarwa. Mm -hmm. 
we pray with him too. Wow. There's a lot of people. And there's a lot of people that need prayer. Yes. And there's, uh, there's a lot of suicide in uh, Shemarwa. Yes. We pray for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we pray for a lot of people, you know, um, just a little old lady sitting out, you know, <laughs> but I'm very happy because prayers could go a thousand miles oh, yeah. across. Yeah. Is any one of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Thank you very much, Audrey. What a wonderful testimony. Audrey suffered so much throughout her life. Even though she still has many health issues, she still has a very positive attitude and is trusting the Lord in all her challenges. This is really contagious. I hope Audrey's story was an encouragement to you. Jesus Christ invites us like the people in the church of Laodicea. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. So if you feel Jesus is speaking to you and you want to make your life right with God, give us a call. We'd love to listen to you and pray with you. Scars and struggles on the way, but what joy your hearts can say. Never once do we ever walk alone, carried by your constant grace, and within your perfect peace. Never once, no, we never walk alone. Never once did we ever walk alone. Never once did you leave us on our own. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. Every step 